Paul Cantona died at 74 last night. He hung around a cafe in North Beach. He was a chain smoker, incidentally. You see, when someone dies, everyone says, well, what did he do? Well, he died. everyone dies. But he died at 74. He had had a heart attack before. He was a chain smoker. That has something to do with health, whether you know it or not. So you look at the uh, Wikipedia entry. Listen to this. Listen to the entry, Jefferson Airplane Rock Band. Jefferson Airplane was an American rock band formed in San Francisco, California, 1965. A pioneer of counterculture-era psychedelic rock, the group was the first band from the San Francisco scene to achieve international mainstream success, Wikipedia. That's true. And Michael Savage is the first media figure in the San Francisco scene to have achieved international mainstream successes, one after the other, bestsellers, band in Britain, you name it. You don't see that on Wikipedia, do you? Never be fooled by the media. Never. Wikipedia is a fraudulent site. Trolls have gone on Wikipedia and changed my entries over and over again to make up lies about me. The people who are jealous, many of whom I know who they are. They make believe I, don't, I know who they are. They're the people who achieve nothing in their life. So I don't want to talk about that. That's all. I'm just saying I've achieved international mainstream success. You're not going to read it on Wikipedia. Why am I telling you that? I'll talk about anything. I feel like filibustering the debate. I feel like talking about even making model airplanes than talking about Huckabee or, or Trump. I can't do it. It's enough already. Can, they, can we please have the election already? Can it be over? It's like pain. One of three escaped. Oh, is a little breaking news. Robert, give me a breaking news thing. Look at this. Look at this. I can't help it. They'll listen. It's a condition response. One of three escaped California inmates back in custody, sheriff's office says. And by the way, guess who helped the Hannibals escape prison? A liberal school teacher in the jail. One of those uh, old maids who can't get a boyfriend, they fall in love with the jailbirds. And the jailbirds are smart, these psychopathic murderers. They know how to seduce these, uh, these old maids in jail. They make them think that they love them. You hear this? And she slips them a saw. It's right out of a bad movie. Please don't make a movie about this, Harvey. I beg you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Jefferson Airplane because Don't Paul Cantner died. How many of you like him? Mean, you got to understand. He was a cultural icon. And I'm a nice guy. I don't care what his politics were. Drug, sex, and rock and roll ruined the world. But what should I do? Hold it against him? He's dead. Joining us right now on the Savage Nation is a really, st a guy is a stand-up guy. Rick Santorum. This guy's the real McCoy. He appeared with Donald Trump last night at the alternative, alternative event. And unlike um, Huckabee, who then the next morning goes on CNN and stabs Trump in the back, basically, by saying, I should have been on the stage instead of him, Rick didn't do that. I mean, this guy is the good, the good, good material, in my opinion. Rick, I'm sorry. I hope you didn't hear any of that. Welcome to the Savage Nation. It's the first time I've ever been introduced with bumper music. White Rabbit is a bumper music. So I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so antithetical to your message, I know. Sorry. No, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it just shows you that you know, I'm a well-rounded guy. That's all. But wait, what's interesting is that, here's the news. You ready for the news flash? Rick, Rick Santorum knew the title of a psychedelic drug song called White Rabbit. How's that possible? How about that, huh? Yeah, well, I... No, I, I was shocked. I can guarantee you if I had Mitt Romney on, he wouldn't have known the title of that, uh, what that song meant or where it was from. Well, there you go. Uh, the the eye. Well, anyway, Mr. Santorum, why did you decide to go to the Trump event last night? That was a beautiful thing you did. Yeah. Hello, Michael. Ah, we lost Rick, him. I did we lose each other already? I can't believe this. I just love this. This is so great for a national show. Nothing's better. Is it a cell phone? Tell me, is it a cell phone? Yes or no? All right, tell Mr. Santorum to please call back. We were having fun. Why should I expect anything different? It's Friday. What happens Monday happens Tuesday, happens Wednesday, happens Thursday, happens Friday. I lose a call. They're not there. They can't hear me. I can't hear them. They tell me it's the equipment. Then I say, fix the equipment. They get the engineer in who fixes the equipment. The next day it happens again. And they said, it isn't the equipment. It's this. It's that. It's, I don't understand any of this, but that's radio. 
Some Clinton emails too damaging to release. Even the Obama administration has just confirmed that. U.S. declares 22 Clinton emails top secret. Now, either they're trying to gang up on her finally, or they want to get in front of the story before they're pulled down with her. Because if, they're, if they don't disclose this inside the administration, they're liable to be pulled into jail if this happened. And they, 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 they could read the handwriting on, on the wall. Even the State Department officials could wind up in the can over this. Mr. Santorum, are we back on the Savage Nation? Yes? Hello, how are you? We're in Iowa, but we have pulled on the side. We've got a signal we can hold on to for a minute. All right, all right. That's nice of you. So, so tell us about the event last night. Tell us why you decided to go with Trump. Look, uh, you know, I was invited to an event that was going to help our veterans. You know, Donald Trump said he was going to raise money for, for veterans. And I have a son in the Air Force. I've got two parents who worked at VA hospitals each for 40 years. In particular, I have my dad, a uh, similar, little different than you. My dad was a psychologist working with PTSD from Vietnam and beyond. And, uh, you know, I lived on a VA ground for 18 years. So veterans are, you know, that's mm. part of my DNA. And, and so if someone wants to stand up and help veterans, I'm going to stand up with them and help and help. Mr. Santorum, we all know that Donald Trump is the front runner. It's likely that if he wins the nomination, which he will win, I think, uh, he's going to head up against, I don't think it's going to be Hillary by what I see. Have you seen these latest, re you've seen what's going on, the revelations that came out today? 22 Clinton emails are declared top secret by the Obama administration just moments ago? I did not see that. Uh, look, I mean, if this person was, if, if she was any other person in America, she would be in, uh, she would be negotiating a plea bargain right now. I mean, th this is uh, I, you're right. I I think the more that comes out, uh, the, the deeper she is in trouble. And obviously, this revelation coming out just before the Iowa caucuses probably means Bernie Sanders is going to get a little shot in the arm, and he doesn't need much here to win. That that's an interesting statement. Bernie Sanders is a is a is an overt communist. He has been since childhood. Some would call him socialist. That's what he defined himself as. But I've studied his past. I know the type. I grew up in New York. These are old trade unionist types from the old days when it meant something different. He's against everything America stands for in terms of economics. He belongs in Castro's Cuba. I don't think he has a chance against Donald Trump. And, and Mr. Santorum, I, I, I guesstimated, I speculated earlier in the show, that if it comes down to Sanders, that the the billionaires and trillionaires who run the Democrat Party are not going to let that happen. They're going to they're going to pick Joe Biden. What do you think of that that theory? Well, I, I you know I don't know. The Democratic Party, as you know, is not a democratic party. It's a party that's run by special interests. And as you know, the a big chunk of the voters in the Democratic convention are super delegates. They have a big chunk of their votes that are not elected at these primaries. And so I suspect. Uh, that all of these different groups will bond together, uh, and uh, if they see Bernie as the handwriting of the wall and they see that he's not, not electable, I have no doubt that they will play with the process and, and come up with a different result than, uh, than Senator Sanders. Or this party is so entrenched, Mr. Santorum, that we could see an indicted individual like Hillary Clinton getting the nomination anyway. It may not even stop them if, if that's the system. They could elect they could nominate her even if she's in prison that, well i think that's probably unlikely you know there are one or two <laughs> democrats not very many that might be eligible to, to uh to go up in a general election but still look it shows you how weak their bench is they they don't have a whole lot to offer america and uh that, that uh, 75 year old socialist is their best opportunity to beat hillary <laughs> well i think he is the face of the democrat party today frankly a 75 year old socialist mr santorum how many children do you have? I remember you were on the show a couple of years ago. How many kids do you have? We have we're raising seven kids. We've uh, uh, ages twenty four to seven. That's such a beautiful thing to hear in this age of ours. And as any parent knows, that's what it's all about. When you, you know, Donald Trump is also a father. That's important for people to know. And he's a very good father. He's also very good to his employees. I know that for for a fact. Did you can? Did you discuss anything with Mr. Trump as to if he wins, what he might do in terms of appointing you somewhere? Was that ever discussed? Can you say that on this program? Uh, no, well, I can tell you categorically, no, it wasn't discussed. I mean, I don't make, I make it a point not to discuss anything like that with anybody uh, during the course of the campaign. And I've been very clear, Michael. I mean, as I just mentioned, I have seven kids, and 
you know, Forbes just did a listing of all the all the uh, candidates and their relative wealth in the camp in, in, in the listing. I think there were 18 candidates at the time. And I think I was 17th of 18th, and you know, I, I've made it clear very publicly not not just because of Donald Trump or anybody else, but I I've got kids going into college. I've got a special needs little girl who has a lot of uh, a lot of medical expenditures and. Uh, I don't have a lot of resources, so I, I've got to go back to work after this thing is all over. If it doesn't work out, my hope is that you know that we're going to win this nomination and win the presidency. But if it if it doesn't work out, um, I've got to get back to work and earn some money to take care of my family. Well, what do you What do you do outside of politics? What What is your profession? Well, I, you know, I'm a recovering lawyer, uh, but I've I've sort of stayed <laughs> away from uh, practice. Uh, I've actually been involved in a variety of these things. I, I, I was involved in a uh, in a firm that does uh, big data analytics, uh, I was very heavily involved with that before I, I decided to jump back into the presidential race. I actually was the CEO of a, of a movie company that made faith-based films. Uh, I, still, I still even have my finger in the pot on that, too. So uh, I've got Good. lots of different things that I'm working on. Well, Rick Santorum, uh, I, we, I personally have great, res great respect for you for what you did last night. And I, I wanted to say thank you, and you're always welcome to meet the, the audience of this program at any time. And again, good luck in all of your endeavors, and thanks for being with us on the Savage Nation. Well, thank you, Michael. I do listen to you uh, when I'm cruising around the car on occasion uh, in Northern Virginia, and uh, I want to thank you for, um, uh, for your particularly your, as you know, I'm, I'm the strongest guy out there with a plan on the borders, and I, I couldn't agree with you more that borders language culture is very, very important to this country, and and so um, I, I appreciate uh, appreciate the work that you're doing. And folks want to help us out, they can go to ricksantorum.com. I'd appreciate your support. Ricksantorum.com. I'm glad you mentioned it. I will mention it again on the show. Good luck. Thank you very much. We wish you the greatest. Well, there it is, a real military family. I didn't even know that part of it. I know he had a lot of kids. And I know he's as good as gold. He's as straight as they come. And uh, I, I thought you'd enjoy having him on the show just for that reason, especially since he went on the stage with Mr. Trump last night. And he, I think he told us the truth. He said, no, he didn't discuss. That's a news thing, by the way. I mean, that's a little news you got for listening to the Savage Nation, wherever you're listening, whether it be Washington or San Francisco or points uh, in between. Look, you know, talk radio is an amazing medium. I have to talk about not just me, but all the shows that are on. Think about it. We're on three hours a day in most markets. For three hours a day, it's uninterrupted. And if there's news, I give it to you. Commentary, sure. Opinion, sure. That's what you're tuning in for. You can get the news. But the quickest news is on, on radio. And it's relentless, meaning our opinions are relentless. We have more influence in that regard than most essayists. Think about that. Let's say they write opinion pieces. They, they do one piece a week, syndicated. Some of them are brilliant, and they have wide distribution. Once a week, and you have to go look for it. Or two columns a week, you have to go look for it. It has to be printed somewhere, and you have to download it and read it. Radio is instant. It's still the most instantaneously uh, received information, especially in, a, in the political jungle that we're living in. The importance is especially significant. Significant is what I'm trying to say to you. And that's why I guess, you know, a week like this, I have to focus only on that. You know I love other things. And I want to talk about the Zika virus because I think that's, all, that's almost more immediate because we're not getting the truth from the government. I played that for you yesterday. Anthony Fauci of the NIH gave us a political statement. He doesn't think, he suspects, it probably isn't. The, the most important thing is vector control, and we'll do that. It sounded like I was listening to a, a, a canned speech from the 1940s about malaria, that they're going to drain the swamps and put on mosquito repellent. There's a lot more at stake here, especially the story I told you earlier, that two cases hint at possible sexual transmission of Zika. And I got this from AFP, which is not a domestic source. And I'm going to read again, get into this. You should know about this. I mean, you know, sex, it doesn't mean it's illicit sex. It could be a man and a woman. The man gets it. In fact, I'll, okay, I'll give it to you now. I'm going around it. You ready? The Zika virus was reported by the New York Times in semen involving a 44-year-old Tahitian man who was exposed during an outbreak of the Zika virus in French Polynesia in 2013, right? The virus was detected in his semen after it was no longer found in his blood. That's amazing. So a blood test wouldn't show it. 
So it was hiding in the semen. Still, it remains unclear how long the virus